So Peter, you've written and studied extensively on cities for the last 50 or 60 years. So I suppose my first question is, I mean, when we think about uh, the nation and the country, you know, why are cities so important? Well, I think cities are important and have been throughout history because they're the places where people come together and uh, basically communicate with each other, where human intelligence expresses itself through uh, people meeting, talking and having ideas. Uh, in Germany in the Middle Ages, they had a wonderful phrase, Stadtluft macht frei, city air makes you free. And um, that was terribly important in, in, in those days, uh, where the contrast was with what Karl Marx memorably called rural idiocy. <laughs> and I don't think you have rural idiocy anymore, um, uh, because the countryside's full of rather affluent people. But in those days, it was certainly true. However, even now, uh, cities are uniquely the places where uh, people come together uh, to uh, generate ideas and share ideas and uh, thus develop new ideas. And that's the whole basis of what we call the knowledge economy today. And in many of your work and in many of your books, you're identifying some of the successful elements, the elements that make cities successful, most famously in, in cities and civilization, which looks across history at the different periods in which cities have performed well and been very successful. What, for you, what are some of the, the elements that uh, make cities so successful? Well, I think what makes a city uniquely successful at a particular point in time, and I'd have to say most cities have their golden ages, but they don't necessarily last that long, uh, what happens is that uh, a group of people come together, often quite a small group of people, um, who develop new ideas, uh, new ways of looking at the world, uh, new ideas of thinking, new ideas about making things. And from this point of view, um, it, what I found interesting in trying to write Cities and Civilization is, I started with uh, what you can call cultural cities, cities of great thought, cities of art and culture, places like uh, ancient Athens, uh, like uh, uh, Renaissance Florence, uh, like Vienna in the uh, 19th century. And then I went on to look at uh, manufacturing cities like Manchester in the 19th century mm. or Detroit in the 20th century. But I found many of the same factors working there. Uh, essentially, these were ideas places. Uh, let me give you an example that in Detroit, um, in the very early 20th century, Henry Ford invented the uh, assembly line. Well, he actually borrowed the assembly line uh, from the meatpacking industry, but he had the idea of making cars cheaply by mass production and thus bringing a car uh, within the uh, capacity, the purse of the average person. The car had been a luxury object until then it were in Europe where it had actually been invented. Mm -hmm. Ford thus didn't invent the car, but he invented the car as we know it today, as something that everyone can aspire to owning and running. So it was a brilliant idea he carried through. And similarly in Silicon Valley, another case study, uh, uh, you got uh, these uh, amazing people who gathered uh, on the um, Stanford University campus in Palo Alto in the 1970s in the so-called homebrew club, swapping ideas, uh, one of which was uh, that the computer, which uh, similar to the car, had been a very expensive mm. uh, object that only huge corporations could afford to own and run, that the computer could become the personal computer owned and used by everyone. And uh, two uh, of those guys, uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak carried through that dream and in 1971 you got the Apple I which started the personal computer revolution. So ideas circulate and ideas uh, and dreams get carried into reality in the case of these manufacturing towns into very concrete reality with huge effects on our everyday lives. That's what I found was the really significant mm. point about the cities I studied. 
And, and turning more specifically, I suppose, to the, to the UK, and particularly the UK system of cities, so not just isolated cities or cities on their own, but actually how they function together. And we know, and you've set out brilliantly in your work, uh, you know, the system of cities, the urban settlement pattern in the UK is quite an old one. We're a relatively old country. And we also know that history matters and it affects what happens uh, next. So just give us a sense as to, from your perspective how you know, the city system has evolved in the UK over uh, the recent past and, and what some of the key factors that have influenced it along the way. Well, I think to understand what's happened to our cities in the recent past, may we, maybe we need to go back to the much more distant past. The most fundamental fact about our country, I think, is that it's been a, a unified country uh, for something like 1,200 years. At any rate, England uh, was a unified country by the time of Alfred the Great in the late 9th century. And as, uh, uh, as we've been recently reminded in uh, Linda Colley's work, um, we then absorbed um, Wales and Scotland uh, and Northern Ireland. Um, uh, this is therefore a very old country and a very old centralised country dominated by its capital city, London. Uh, that pattern was modified, very strongly modified, in the Industrial Revolution starting uh, around 1780 and going through to the end of the 19th century by new industries that sprang up on the coal fields uh, and sometimes in port cities in the north of England and in South Wales and in central Scotland. Uh, and they were there uh, for uh, very strictly technological, technological reasons. The industries depended on coal um, and uh, they had to be near the coal fields. Uh, they also had to be near ports that brought in imported raw materials. And that pattern uh, flourished for a very short period of our history, perhaps for uh, as little as 100 years before it began to dissolve even in the 1920s, 1930s uh, due to uh, global changes and um, globalization is not a new phenomenon. It was already uh, happening then. Gradually these industries began to erode and in many cases collapse and disappear. Uh, so we have therefore a very strange pattern today I think I in our country of a, an increasingly dominant capital city, a global capital city, and uh, a region around it which is flourishing almost in London's shadow, but a vast area outside that uh, which is uh, highly problematic apart from a very few core cities which are displaying resilience, places like uh, Manchester, Leeds, Newcastle. Uh, but it's what um, the uh, a French urbanist uh, Pierre Veltz and also our own uh, geographer Danny Dawling have called an archipelago economy, a few islands sticking up uh, 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 within a vast sea or one might even say swamp of economic stagnation and decline. A very problematic situation indeed I think uh, for planners. And you've studied uh, cities and urban systems across the world and over time, Peter. I mean, how does the UK compare to, to other countries, both in the way that they think about their cities and the way that their cities uh, interact with each other? And given what you've just said, uh, you know, are there other places where we can begin to look for some uh, solutions or some ideas about how uh, we, we affect and, and modify the UK economy as we, as we go forward into the future? Well, it's a, a vast um, exercise to talk about global development worldwide, mm. but let me just concentrate on something a bit easier to handle, uh, which is uh, our position in Europe. Uh, I, I've recently published a, a book about European cities called Good Cities, Better Lives, because I have become convinced that there are some cities in Europe that have done outstandingly well on a number of different uh, components, uh, whether these be economic, social, environmental, or whatever. Uh, among these cities are Scandinavian uh, places like Stockholm, Malmö, and Copenhagen, uh, Dutch cities um, uh, like uh, Amsterdam and The Hague, 
and also perhaps outstandingly German cities, uh, which have maintained an extremely strong position. Um, one uh, thing that uh, some of these cities share, particularly the Scandinavian and the German cities, is their ability to maintain a strong uh, research and development base uh, through outstanding universities and also through national research institutes, particularly important in Germany, where you have two sets of institutes. One, um, the um, uh, fundamental uh, research institutes called the Max Planck Institutes and the other applied research institutes called Fraunhofer Institutes. And these collaborate together to uh, promote fundamental research and to spin off that research into actual production. And this, I believe, is the source of the extraordinary and continuing uh, German resilience in um, small and medium-sized firms, uh, which are highly innovative in generating and producing uh, new products, uh, what the Germans call the Mittelstand. Um, I'll give you an example of this that I particularly like. Um, uh, for um, over a year now, on my commuter train in from Ealing Broadway to Paddington in London, I've been passing the site where the tunnel boring machines have gone down uh, to dig out Crossrail, mm -hmm. this vast 16 million pound um, railway uh, necessary to accommodate London's continuing economic and population growth. The huge tunnel boring machines that went down there are made by a German firm called Herrenknecht. I researched this firm. It was started in 1975 by one guy, Martin Herrenknecht. Today, it's a vast um, complex. Uh, they are just opening a new factory in China, for instance, where there's a huge market. Uh, because this one guy saw in 1975 that there was going to be business in uh, automated tunnel boring machines that would take all the labour, all the sweat of guys digging out tunnels and replace it by a piece of highly sophisticated computerised machinery. Classic German approach and they do it brilliantly and we need to learn from them how they do it. Professor Peter Hall, thank you very much.